I first heard about e-cigarettes around 2010. I've been working generally in the field of drug and alcohol use over many years and ways to help people reduce their risks from using drugs. So when I heard about e-cigarettes, I thought here was the missing link for smoking. You know, here was something which people could use instead of smoking and avoid all the risks associated with smoking. So actually I was, I was very excited when I first heard about them and my enthusiasm for them has, if anything, anything increased over the years. Using an e-cigarette differs profoundly from smoking tobacco. The key thing is that there's no burning. Uh, the problem with cigarettes is that you're burning vegetable matter and paper, so you're inhaling all sorts of products which are harmful to you. And so cut out all of that, you're going to avoid a lot of risks to your health. It might seem simple-minded, but e-cigarettes are important because people actually like them. Just think, they really only came onto the market in the UK around 2007. Really, they came from nowhere. And there wasn't much advertising. There wasn't much in the way of, well, there hasn't been anything in the way of promotion by the NHS. But over a few years, they're now being used by millions of people in the UK, and they've been tried by many more. In the space of a few years, I mean, the latest data we have is that something like 8 million smokers have tried them. They haven't all gone on to use them, around 2 to 2.5 million have gone on to use them regularly. But that's just an amazing achievement of people through their own, using their own money, not using NHS services, but coming to see these things as helping them to quit smoking. There's now an accumulation of evidence from studies in the UK, in Europe, and in North America that e-cigarettes are substantially safer than regular cigarettes. In fact, there's no situation in which it's safer to smoke than to use an e-cigarette. Now, because the studies vary, they're looking at different aspects of e-cigarettes. They're looking, for example, at toxicology, you know, what's in them, what are the toxic effects, what are the immediate health effects. We've got lots of different measures of safety. Now, how to communicate that is a, a problem because there are different measures. E-cigarettes might be lower on this and a bit higher on that. They're always going to be lower than cigarettes. So can you put a figure on that? Well, it's a difficult one, but Public Health England has said that the, the e-cigarettes are 95 percent less risky than smoking. So the first question in anybody's mind should be how does it compare with a cigarette and they need to know they can be assured that e-cigarettes are substantially much less risky than smoking. Many people will be worried that even though they're not inhaling this cocktail of burnt matter they're still using nicotine. And Does it matter to use nicotine? In, is nicotine itself harmful? And I think in many people's mind, in the medical profession and in the public mind, many people think that nicotine causes cancer. Well, nicotine doesn't cause cancer. And what we know from the long-term use of nicotine is that it's relatively harmless. There may be, you know, if we look 10, 20, 30, 40 years ahead, we might find some issues with its use, but nothing compared with the problems that come from the combustion of, of, of cigarettes. We know nicotine is relatively harmless because it's used in other treatments. It's used in nicotine replacement therapy products, gums, patches and so on. Clearly, it's not inhaled through those products, so that's something we need to think about, but there is now evidence for long-term use of nicotine through NRT products. We also know there's long-term use of nicotine in some other countries where oral tobaccos are used, as in, as in Sweden. Epidemiological evidence going back over 20, 30 years, all of which indicate that nicotine is not really something that people should be worried about. They may be worried that they are still addicted to nicotine because uh, they're still using it, they still have a desire for it. But 
that for me is more of a moral issue or a psychological issue. Addiction to nicotine is not really on a parallel to addiction to some other drugs. People don't go out to steal and to thieve to buy nicotine. So looking at it as a, as a habit, a habit that many people actually in, in, enjoy, it, it, it probably puts a little bit more in, in perspective. Now, some people might even say it's a little bit more like, say, caffeine. A lot of us have a liking for caffeine, for tea, and coffee, and so on. Strip away the harmful stuff, and you're left with the substance that people actually, some people want to, to use. Most of us don't like inhaling smoke from other people's cigarettes. We're worried about the harms to ourselves from, if you like, secondhand smoking when we're unwillingly inhaling somebody else's smoke. An advantage of e-cigarettes is that there's no smoke, so there's no contaminants that are coming off the end of the of, of cigarette. Uh, if you're inhaling anything when anybody around you is vaping, what you're inhaling is what's coming out of their breath. So they're inhaling from the e-cigarette and in their breath, is there anything that's dangerous to you, to me or to others? And all the evidence is that what's coming out is actually very, very minimal traces of, of nicotine and other substances. In fact, there's a very interesting study I was reading recently where they looked at the residues of nicotine and other and, and toxins in the homes of smokers, in the homes of e-cigarette users and in the homes of people who didn't use either. And the homes of e-cigarette users, the top level of toxins were actually similar to the level, level of toxins in the homes of people who neither smoked nor used e-cigarettes. So in the air around us, we're not going to die because we're inhaling something that somebody else has breathed out when they're using an e-cigarette. Because there is no secondhand smoke and there's no obvious risk to others from vaping, it makes no sense at all to ban vaping or to include vaping in bans on smoking in public places. And quite sensibly in this country, we don't do that. We haven't made vaping subject to the same laws as there are against smoking in pubs, restaurants and so on and so forth. There is some issue, I suppose it's more about etiquette. You know, would one want to be sitting in a restaurant where somebody beside you is using an e-cigarette which has a strong flavour? Well, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not an e-cigarette user, I'm not a smoker, but there's a politeness aspect to it. There's also a very practical aspect to this, because if we ban e-cigarettes in public places, we're sort of saying to e-cigarette users, well, you know, you're just the same as smokers. Go outside, into the rain, with all those smokers outside. That's not a very good message. We need to send out the message that vaping is different from smoking. So, to my mind, it makes no sense at all to, to ban vaping in public places. We need a good bit of sense, you know, a bit of politeness, in an office, you know, if there are some who want to vape and others don't really like that, well, you know, people can just go to another corner or, or to, to, to another room out of respect for others, just as I wouldn't necessarily want to sit next to somebody in our office who's eating fish and chips because I don't like the smell of the, the chips and the vinegar. But, you know, these things can be handled in a reasonable manner. You don't need the state, you don't need laws to tell people how to do this. There are reports of serious incidents with e-cigarettes, their batteries or their chargers causing problems, catching fire, exploding, causing damage to people, hurting people. Clearly a concern, but we have to put this into some sort of perspective. Uh, the most dangerous device in this house is our washing machine and washer dryer. All electrical equipment can cause problems. The occurrence of incidents from e-cigarettes, battery problems and batteries catching fire is very, very low. And unfortunately, 
a lot of the incidents are caused by human stupidity. Now, I'm not saying it's stupid people, but we all do stupid things. So using the wrong battery, using, using a cheap battery, using the wrong charger. Some of the serious incidents that have been reported, uh, one recently was with what's called a mechanical mod, somebody who'd built their own device, which didn't have all the safety devices in it, which caused thing, you know, the device to shut down. So things like this, you know, will have electrical circuitry which prevent overheating, overloading of the battery and so on. It will just shut down. You can't cause damage um, from something like this. The other thing to note is that the most common cause of deaths from household fires are from cigarette smoking. So we know that cigarette smoking matches Smoking cigarettes after being out for an evening, drinking, smoking in bed, very dangerous, best avoided. And most of the deaths we have from the use of nicotine, or the vast majority, are actually from smoking cigarettes. So again, always put it in proportion. The e-cigarette incident will grab the headlines, but the bloke that comes home from the pub after too many drinks and smokes in bed and sets fire to the bed, that doesn't get the headlines, that just that happens. So media reporting is important here, but also getting things into proportion. My overview of um, safety is that nothing is safe in this world. We have to say, is something safer than something else? And all the research evidence that we have so far is that e-cigarettes are so many times safer than regular cigarettes. It's a no-brainer. If you gave somebody the choice of using a cigarette or using an e-cigarette, and the e-cigarette 95% plus safer than this. So there's really no, there's no question about which one you should use if you want to use nicotine. There's this interesting term harm reduction or tobacco harm reduction. It sounds a little bit sort of hairy fairy to, you know, anybody who's in the real world, but it's, some, it's a word that people in public health use. But it's, it's all around us. We're always trying to reduce risks. There are lots of things that we do which have risks attached to them. We can't not do them, but we can try to avoid hurting ourselves. Let's take driving. We know that driving can be dangerous. When cars were first introduced, there was a huge death toll. Over time, we've reduced the risks from driving. We've made the product better and safer, better brakes, airbags, and so on. We've made the driving environment safer, traffic lights, speed limits. We educate drivers to drive courteously and safer. So that, that's, that's harm reduction. So the question arises how you can use an e-cigarette to reduce your harm from smoking. For some people, it happens immediately. You start using an e-cigarette and never touch a cigarette again. And that is, uh, there's some extraordinary testimony from e-cigarette users who say, well, I started using an e-cigarette and I've, I was a 30, 30 year smoker, 30 a day, started using e-cigarettes, immediately worked for me. So I never touch the cigarettes again. So that's, that's complete switch and that's harm reduction. For others, it's a bit more of a gradual process. It's reducing uh, harm in little stages. So people may be smoking and using an e-cigarette in certain circumstances where they're not allowed to smoke. Um, they may not quite get onto e-cigarettes full time and still want to smoke. And that's often called dual use. It's often talked about as though it's something bad. And I don't think it is bad because any shift I see as a, a, a shift away from smoking is, is important. And some people can't make that big jump. So there's, you know, there, 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 there's gradual um, harm reduction. And of course, if you're not smoking cigarettes or not smoking them so much, there's harm reduction for your family and your friends at work as well, because you're not blowing smoke in their face and so on. So there are, there are stages. There's so some people it's the big jump and it works. And for others, it's an incremental thing. They're clearly working for many people. They're acceptable. Uh, they're enjoyable. 
uh, and they deliver nicotine. So people find them an acceptable alternative to cigarette smoking. As a social scientist, I think it's one of the attractions also is that you don't feel miserable when you switch to using an e-cigarette. You're not a patient. You're not going to the doctor for help. You're not going through this big struggle of giving up cigarettes, getting onto some, you know, maybe some nicotine replacement therapy, which is all a little bit miserable. But here is something which is actually quite, you know, it, there's still some enjoyment. And I, 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 you know, I, I'm not encouraging people to use nicotine, but people who use nicotine, they, they like using nicotine and switching to e-cigarettes is something which they find relatively easy to do. I mean, somebody once said to me that, uh, you know, there are medications for stopping smoking, which you might get from a doctor or from a stop smoking clinic. And there's e-cigarettes. Now, with, with medications, there are no websites and internet forums extolling the virtues of these medications. They go online with e-cigarettes. There's thousands and thousands of testimonies online. There are websites run by vapors. There are chat forums. One of the biggest chat forums in the UK gets 10,000 visits a day. And could you imagine a smoking cessation service having, or a public health body having a website that was getting 10,000 visits a day from people who want to know how to switch smoking? You wouldn't. So there's something going on here which is very different from the way we've traditionally looked at helping people to quit. We've, we've had a lot of successes in reducing smoking. Over the last 40 years, the numbers of smokers has, has, has halved. Um, but e-cigarettes, they kind of look a little bit mysterious and a little bit potentially dangerous because, you know, what if e-cigarettes stopped that decline in smoking? What if e-cigarettes really just helped people to yeah, continue smoking, didn't give them the motivation to really quit? Or what if e-cigarettes might be a stepping stone? So rather than the kid starting to smoke a cigarette because a friend's given him or her a, a, a cigarette, uh, maybe a kid starts using an e-cigarette, gets a liking for nicotine, and then wants to go and spend a lot of money buying regular cigarettes. So clearly, you know, that there, there's a concern here because we don't want to upset all the progress we've made over the last decades in persuading people to stop smoking. But when we look at it, none of that has happened. With the introduction of e-cigarettes, the numbers of smokers have continued to decline. If anything, I see e-cigarettes as further denormalizing smoking. Because if you're waving something like this around, it says, look, mate, this is 95 to 99% safer than that awful thing you're smoking there. So this sends a message that I've given up smoking, and it sends a message to other people that you too can give up smoking. So I see e-cigarettes as helping to denormalize the smoking of cigarettes. And all the fears that some of us had, some of my colleagues had, about upsetting the progress that had been made, th th those have turned out to be groundless. There's a lot of disagreement that appears in the media and elsewhere. And you know, one scientist says, these are the best thing that ever happened. Another scientist sa says that these are the worst thing that's ever happened. So how does how how do people navigate this? And of course, it's a it's a big problem generally in health matters because one week we hear that fats are bad, next week we hear that you know it's carbohydrates that are bad, and we really really don't know who to to believe. A lot of people actually see through a lot of those 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 issues. And, you know, of course, I'm worried when it looks as though fewer people think that e-cigarettes are safer than cigarettes than a couple of years back, because clearly the, the media coverage has raised some uncertainties. But we have a strong message now that e-cigarettes are 95% safer than smoking. 
So if you have a member of your family who is smoking, you know, the advice is obvious. You know, this device, this e-cigarette device is going to be healthier for you and for your family than um, smoking. And I think people, um, you know, are, do make those sorts of judgments. They see a lot of um, information in the press and elsewhere, but people do make good judgments about their health and they as it were, are voting with their feet when it comes to e-cigarettes, the two million plus who regularly use them. They weren't told to use them by doctors, they weren't told to use them by public health experts. They saw their friends using them and they decided that this was for them. I think a new landscape is emerging with regards to nicotine and with people switching from smoking. We will see in the coming years a wider range of safer nicotine delivery devices. We'll see a lot of innovation in companies in new ways of delivering nicotine in less harmful ways. I think that's good. It, it's partly a repositioning of nicotine as a drug. Then the main benefit is that it will give many people many more opportunities to use alternatives to smoking. It won't, as some people have wanted, be an end to tobacco use and it won't be an end to nicotine use. But we will, in the coming decades, get rid of this most harmful way of delivering nicotine, which is smoking a cigarette. If I were to give one bit of advice to smokers about e-cigarettes, it's give them a try. You've got nothing to lose. Uh, you might find they work for you. I hope they will work for you. But there's everything to gain by trying them. If I could give a little bit of supplementary advice, it would be if you're a smoker, go and talk to somebody who's vaping and find out what it does for them. And if you're a vapor, go and tell somebody who's smoking what vaping has done for you.